Picture this, a dimly lit room, the soft hum of a projector, and the anticipation hanging heavy in the air. You settle into your seat, popcorn in hand, as the opening credits of the 1962 movie Cape Fear flicker to life on the silver screen. From the very first frame, it's clear that this is no ordinary film. It's a cinematic journey that will grip your senses and refuse to let go. Do you remember that moment, the first time you encountered this cinematic masterpiece? Perhaps it was the menacing presence of Max Cady, played with chilling intensity by Robert Mitchum, that sent shivers down your spine. Or maybe it was Gregory Peck's portrayal of Sam Bowden, the relentless attorney, determined to protect his family at any cost. The tension, the suspense, and the psychological warfare that unfolded on that fateful night left an indelible mark on the minds of many. But let's delve deeper into the shadows of this classic thriller. Did you know that J. Lee Thompson, the director, faced censorship challenges during the production due to the film's intense content? It's a testament to the film's power that it pushed boundaries and forced viewers to confront their own fears. And speaking of boundaries, did you catch the iconic score by Bernard Herrmann? It's a symphony of suspense that added a haunting dimension to the film, making every moment even more unforgettable. So, as we journey back to the world of Cape Fear, let these random facts illuminate the dark corners of your memory and remind you of the sheer brilliance that this movie brought to the screen. Strap in for a thrilling ride through cinematic history, because we're about to unveil more intriguing details about this classic. Stay tuned, for there's more to discover in the shadows of Cape Fear. In 1962, the movie Cape Fear made its mark in cinema history. While researching this film, I came across some interesting details. Gregory Peck, who produced the film, didn't like the original novel's title, The Executioners. He believed that movies named after places tended to be more successful. So, he searched for a suitable place name and stumbled upon Cape Fear in North Carolina. This decision gave the movie its distinctive title. Additionally, in the 1991 remake of Cape Fear, Gregory Peck, Martin Balsam, and Robert Mitchum returned to the screen. Peck played Katie's lawyer, Balsam portrayed a judge, and Mitchum took on the role of a police lieutenant who suggested alternative means to deal with Katie. It's intriguing how these actors returned to a familiar story in different roles. That's a glimpse into the backstory of Cape Fear and its connections across time. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of this classic thriller. The 1962 movie Cape Fear, behind the scenes in the 1962 movie Cape Fear, there's an intriguing detail that often goes unnoticed. It's about the way the film correctly depicted what someone sees when looking through binoculars. In most movies, the portrayal of binocular vision is inaccurate, showing a sideways figure eight, two side-by-side -side magnified images, one for each eyepiece. But in reality, when you peer through binoculars, you see a single round magnified image, similar to what you see through a telescope. Cape Fear got this right, offering a more realistic perspective. However, that's not the only interesting tidbit from the making of this classic thriller. According to Polly Burgeon, during one of the scenes with Robert Mitchum, he accidentally cut his hand on a cabinet. Despite his hand being covered in blood, they both continued with the scene, caught up in the moment. It took the intervention of the crew to physically stop them. It's a testament to their dedication to the craft and the intensity of their performances. Furthermore, the casting of Cape Fear had its share of interesting twists. Charles Bronson, James Coburn, Charlton Heston, Jack Palance, and John Wayne were all considered for the role of Sam Bowden. Gregory Peck, who eventually took the part, was a last-minute replacement for Charlton Heston, who was originally cast. This casting shuffle had a significant impact on the final product and the performances we see on screen. In conclusion, the 1962 movie Cape Fear is not just a gripping thriller, but also a film that paid attention to detail when it came to depicting binocular vision. It's a movie filled with unexpected moments both on and off screen, from actors bleeding during intense scenes to last minute casting changes that shaped the film's outcome. These behind the scenes stories add depth to the movie's legacy. In 1962, the movie Cape Fear made waves in Hollywood. One notable aspect was the tension between its stars, Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum. Peck later expressed his disappointment, saying, I had given him the role and had paid him a terrific amount of money. It was obvious he had the better role. 
I thought he would understand that, but he apparently thought he acted me off the screen. I didn't think highly of him for that. The film's financial struggles also left a mark. It led to the downfall of Gregory Peck's production company, Melville Productions, as Cape Fear didn't perform as expected at the box office. Director J. Lee Thompson had a vision for the film that set it apart. He aimed for a Hitchcockian atmosphere, opting for black and white cinematography, and incorporating elements like unusual lighting angles, an eerie score by Bernard Herrmann, close-ups, and subtle hints rather than explicit violence. This approach created a suspenseful and chilling atmosphere, making Cape Fear a standout thriller of its time. In the end, Cape Fear of 1962 remains a classic in the thriller genre, remembered for its intense performances and innovative cinematic choices. In the 1962 movie Cape Fear, Polly Burgeon faced a mishap during a scene where her character struggled with Katie, played by Robert Mitchum. In this scene, Katie was supposed to drag her character through various doors on the set. However, due to a crew member's mistake, all the doors were locked. When Mitchum forced Burgeon through the doors, she ended up being used as a ram to push them open. This unexpected incident resulted in Polly Burgeon suffering minor bruises during the filming. Another interesting aspect of the movie is the contrasting personalities of the two lead actors, Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum. Peck was known for meticulously preparing for his roles, while Mitchum had a remarkable photographic memory and often learned his lines just before shooting a scene. Their different approaches to acting added an intriguing dynamic to the film. Before its release, Cape Fear underwent heavy censorship, with several key elements of the fight scenes removed. Additionally, numerous implications that Katie planned to sexually assault and then tortuously murder characters Peggy and Nancy were also deleted. These deleted scenes and implications were never restored in the final version of the film. In summary, Cape Fear from 1962 had its share of behind-the-scenes incidents, including a memorable mishap involving Polly Burgeon, as well as the contrasting acting styles of its lead actors, Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum. The film also faced censorship challenges that led to the removal of significant content. These elements contribute to the unique history of this classic movie. In the 1962 movie Cape Fear, there's an intriguing story behind a particular scene involving X. Director J. Lee Thompson improvised this scene on the day of filming. During this scene, Robert Mitchum rubs eggs on Polly Burgeon. What's fascinating is that Polly Burgeon's reactions to Mitchum's egg antics were entirely real. Her surprise and discomfort were unscripted, making the scene more genuine and impactful. Another noteworthy aspect of the 1962 Cape Fear is its soundtrack. The music for the film was composed by the renowned Bernard Herrmann. Interestingly, some of Herrmann's musical compositions from the 1962 version were reused in the 1991 remake of Cape Fear. This demonstrates the lasting impact of Herrmann's work on the film's atmosphere and tension. In summary, Cape Fear from 1962 offers viewers not only a thrilling story, but also behind-the-scenes anecdotes like the improvised egg scene and the enduring power of Bernard Herrmann's soundtrack. These elements contribute to the movie's lasting legacy in the world of cinema. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the cinematic masterpiece that is the 1962 film, Cape Fear, I invite you to take a moment to reflect. This gripping tale of suspense and vengeance has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema, and perhaps, on your own cinematic soul. As you think back on this classic thriller, consider the visceral emotions it stirred within you. Did it send shivers down your spine, or make your heart race in anticipation? Did you find yourself torn between sympathy and dread for the characters? Or maybe it sparked a dialogue within you about justice, morality, and the limits of retribution. Whether you watched it alone in the dim glow of your screen or shared the experience with friends and family, Cape Fear has a way of lingering in your thoughts long after the credits roll. It's a film that invites us to explore the depths of our own morality, to question our own capacity for revenge, and to confront the darkness that exists within us all. Now, I encourage you to share your thoughts, memories, and reflections on this iconic film. What moments stood out to you? Which characters left an indelible mark on your psyche? How did Cape Fear change your perspective on suspense and justice in cinema? Your unique perspective adds depth to the tapestry of this cinematic journey. 
So take a moment to share your thoughts with us and with fellow enthusiasts. Let's keep the conversation alive and thriving. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Cape Fear. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Until we embark on our next cinematic adventure, stay curious, stay captivated, and keep those thoughts flowing.